Yeah, Troy, I have a quick uh, question as well. Sure. Um, if so, you said like types don't mix. So if if you know you're in a situation where, like I said, I'm an accommodator, and if I know I'm with another accommodator, like what what are some things I can do? Is is that where I just need to use those different tactics or or different strategies, or is it is is there something else I should do to to try to make that a working situation? One of the things you need to have is a good coach. We tell people don't go into negotiations by yourself. If there's any opportunity to have a coach, have that coach that have that coach there because they'll keep you on track. They'll keep you from over-promising and under-delivering because they'll move the conversation along. If not, you guys will sit there and be talking about everything under the sun and probably won't get the negotiations done. Troy, can I add something? Sure, go ahead, Derek. Yeah, so, um, just for clarification's sake, like types are mismatches only when you're thinking about accommodators. The worst type mismatch for an accommodator is another accommodator. The type mismatches that you need to be aware of with the other two is the other two don't like each other. <laughs> Analysts and assertives are two sides of the same coin. And for that reason, they don't like dealing with one another. So your question was, how do you, how do you navigate the conversation? You have to understand what the other two look like in order to round out your negotiation skills. For example, if Roman, you're an accommodator, you're going up against another accommodator, you know for a fact that that accommodator will promise you things they had no intention on delivering because they wanna keep you happy in the moment. They wanna keep that relationship live and prosperous in the moment. And you know that by and large, accommodators have a propensity for walking you up to the edge of a minefield and not telling you about it, knowing that your next step could be your last. And so, what does that mean for you? That means that you have to, uh, you, you're going to have to throw in a lot of implementation questions. You're going to have to throw in a lot, in, in, you're going to have to what and how them to death after an agreement has been made because of their inclination to not be as forthright because they want to make you happy. I had, there was one accommodator, or yeah, one accommodator that, that told us you know, try to get your head around this if you can. I'm not intentionally trying to lie to you, but you can't believe every word that comes out of my mouth. So I'm going to let, I'm going to let you sit there and think about that for a while, because that was said to us probably nine years ago, and I'm still trying to get my head around it. I can't, I, you, yeah, you can't believe everything that comes out of my mouth mouth but I'm not intentionally trying to lie to you that is the mindset of an accommodator so you're going to have to test every time you get an agreement from them you're going to have to test it more than you do with the other two people or the other two types awesome thank you um about assertive a type of assertive how do, can you put an example but on a business um like a business example how how somebody could be assertive on a business negotiation so in a business negotiation, if you if if there's a certain price that they want to get, and you have a different uh, price that you that you think it should be, and we had this conversation earlier today, mm -hmm. the assertive is going to say, "This is where we need to be at. Take it or leave it." You know, I've already done everything. I know what the price should be at. I know what the market is. You're trying to get over on me. I need to get it at this price. Okay, so that's good. I'm that I'm that type, you know. But also mm -hmm. analysts, because when it comes to negotiations, you always want to be hearing the other part. Uh, that's analyzing what they want and what they need. But then, if it comes the time for a negotiation for a price, um, you know, this is the best I can do for you. But uh, if this doesn't accommodate for what you're looking for, perhaps there's other options for you. So these are two types combined, correct? So, so yeah, you're you're absolutely right, Ricardo. But here's what I want you, here's what I want you to think about when you're thinking about your type. When you've got skin in the game, and you're in the room with me, and I smash you in the face with the brick, what are you going to do? When I come into the room and I start attacking you with ad hominem attacks about your company, about your character, about your integrity, about your product, about your service, what are you going to do? 
when the emotions are high, pressure is on, and I'm painting you into a corner and I'm limiting your options, what are you going to do? They'll be analysts, you know. We're going to fight, we're going to make friends, or we're going to run. So don't think of this in terms of who you are and who you're trying to identify. Don't think of this in terms of your day-to-day life, because in your day-to-day life, yes, you have to be some of everything. But I'm talking about when you're threatened. Right. In the heat of the moment. Where do you go? It's, it's you know, it's, it's funny you say that because uh, Mike Tyson used to say, everybody has a plan until <laughs> you get punched in the face. <laughs> we right? we right. use that all and the time. And that's exactly right. right. That's right. We use it all the so, time. Sentiments and get involved and other things <laughs> get involved. So, all right. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Sure. Anybody else? Oh, Troy, if I could just uh, ask one question. Um, sure. I just typed it out actually in the messages. Because um, in the normal negotiation, um, I try to, I'm, I'm mostly an accommodator, but when you have an assertive across the table and he tries to push forward with his facts, push forward with his opinions, it's hard being an accommodator to actually win that argument because you have all these facts being thrown at you, all these information, and then you're just trying to you kind of shy away in, a, in, in, in that sort of situation. What, what's the best way to make the other side actually hear you and your points and your, your facts that you're trying to put across? So remember at the top, we said the C was the curiosity. Mm-hmm. You want to stay curious. Why is he throwing out these numbers? Why is he doing this? Why is he trying to get, get you confused? His whole intention is to make you think negative thoughts, not be able to communicate well, forget about what your plan of action is, how you're going to get there. And so now he's just he's just messed with your brain he, that, that amygdala is messed up. <laughs> now you can't think straight. So you, you're going to start giving into whatever he wants because you're not used to having to deal with that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So that's when you want to start labeling and mirroring. We always, we always re- the label in your mirror. It seems like you've done some research. It sounds like you're saying this because you have a number in mind. Okay. Shane, and, so and, and, and can I, Shane, are you, are you an accommodator? Is that why you posed I that would question? Say, yes, I would say so. Okay. So, mm-hmm. um, as an accommodator dealing with an assertive, think of yourself, they, first of all, they love dealing with you because you guys will get smacked around the room and <laughs> enjoy it and not say I've, anything about I've, it. I've had that once and once or twice in the past, to be honest. Right. And, and so first, knowing, know that going in, the assertive automatically enjoys being in the room with you. You are at an advantage because all you have to do is shut up to maintain the relationship. If they're talking to Troy's point, you are learning. And most people view the assertive as the most difficult negotiation partner when in reality, they're the easiest. They're the easiest to deal with because I don't have to say anything. They just want, they want to drive. They want to pontificate. They want to tell me how smart, brilliant, and just bad they are. And so I let them do that. Now, there are ways once you get them to once 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 you've allowed them to share their vision once you've allowed them to dump their bucket once you allowed them to push out all the data and information that they wanted to put out there's nothing okay. that says that it's now not your turn and so respectfully deferentially you're just going to set them up with a a after you've labeled and mirrored everything that they've given you you're going to set them up with a no oriented question uh, simply something like this. Are you, uh, I appreciate you taking the time to share that with me. Are you against me walking you through what our vision is on how this is going to play out? Let that sit for one or two seconds. No oriented question. You're trying to generate that no response, but uh, a no verbal response, but the actual result is a yes. And then right before you jump into all of your data and information, you're gonna set it up with the accusations audit, which is what we're gonna talk about next. 
And that is, this is going to catch you off guard. You're going to think that I'm naive and don't have a good appreciation of what the market looks like. And let that sit one, okay. 1, 000, two, 1, 000, three, 1, 000. And now you lay out your side of the story. So while he thought he was bulldozing you, steamrolling you when he was throwing out all of his data and information, the reality is he was giving you information that you were going to now use to state your case in chief. Make sense? Makes sense. So basically take the 45 second gap that you suggested and kind of wait up and build your it's, position. It's not going to be a 45 second gap. It's just going to be, let them go. You know, when you first sit down with this assertive, simply at, simply make this statement. It seems like you have a vision for how this is going to work out. You open that up to an assertive and you can just sit back for the next 10 minutes. You're not going to be able to say one thing because they're just going to look all of this information on you. Now you pick your spots, label and mirror, paraphrase, whatever you get, especially those things that support your position, right? Mm -hmm. And then you switch it around and now you're gonna give it to them. So the time limit is however much time they take. You just, we're not in a hurry. So if it takes them three hours to get through to their point, we'll wait there for three hours. Thanks for that. Yeah. So if you're talking about the 45 seconds to a minute, that's when they're attacking you. Uh, you know, that's when you let them just, it'll, it'll pass. But just like he said, the assertive, they'll, they'll talk. And every time you do a dynamic silence, they think it's their turn to talk, let them. It makes it a lot easier for you. 80% of the time in the negotiations, we're going to have the accommodator voice. We're going to be friendly. We're going to be kind. We're going to be considerate. We're going to want to build that relationship. The other 20% of the time you want to have the late night DJ voice. That's where you're going to be precise. You're going to be direct. You're going to speak very clearly in an effort to get a part across what you need to get across. And a good time that you use that is when you're stating your position. Mm 